Yes, Clank, we're um, going to be talking about teaching man-to-man -man defense and uh, uh, looking at some of the very basic principles involved with teaching uh, defending the ball uh, in an off-ball situation and in an on-ball situation playing man-to-man -man defense. As you can see from this diagram here, uh, we have one player who is responsible for guarding the ball and really the other four players away from the ball uh, in what we would call an off-ball defensive position. So uh, there's very specific duties for the on-ball defender and very specific positions that the off-ball defender should be in. So key things for an on-ball defender is their stance, you know, being in an athletic position, ready to move and guard the person with the ball so they can stay between them and the basket. Being deep, be able to defend the, trip, the dribble, the pass and the shot. Um, On-ball defenders can pick up a very, a varying points on the floor. Uh, as you can see here, uh, this is an example of what we call full court pickup, where the uh, player who has the ball is uh, picked up immediately, they catch the inbounds pass, and uh, the defender then is going to uh, pressure the ball the full length of the court. And um, this is one of the things, it's a coaching decision, you can pick up full court if you want, or you could simply get back uh, once your team loses possession of the ball and pick up the other team in the half court area. So in this situation here, the player with the ball will advance the ball down the floor until they get to the uh, around the centre line, and that would be then be the pickup points for the defence. So this would be an example of half court uh, defence on the ball, and uh, you can pick up the defence in a quarter court situation if you choose to as well. Where you uh, perhaps get back, protect the basket as quickly as possible, um, and uh, allow the other team to bring the ball down the floor, and be more concerned about uh, playing man to man defence. Uh, around your own basket rather than up the court. Key things for off-ball defenders uh, is to get in what we call a defensive triangle position uh, where their ball side of uh, the player they're guarding, uh, one third closer to the ball where they have vision on the ball and vision on their man. Um, they can play in an open or a closed stance, we'll talk about that later. And the final thing they need to be able to do is, uh, is block out. So here's an example of uh, an off-ball defender being in what we call a defensive triangle. You can see uh, each player has a line between them and the ball, a line between them and the player they're guarding, and a line between the player they're guarding and the ball. So all four players off the ball, uh, in fact, cause uh, form a triangle. This triangle changes once uh, if the player without the ball was to cross the imaginary line between the ball and the basket. In this diagram here you can see uh, uh, player zero uh, is crossing that imaginary line so if the defender maintains their position in a defensive triangle um, they would quickly be out of position. Here we see what they do, what they need to do once that player crosses that imaginary line is they need to adjust their stance uh, so that they're always closer to that line between the ball and the basket than the player they're guarding. You can see here the player, uh, once that player crosses that line, would open or close to the ball. Here we can see an example of uh, in full court man to man uh, pickup where all players off the ball are also picking up their player as quickly as possible, and all players off the ball uh, are in defensive triangles. You can imagine uh, lines between them, the ball, and the player they're guarding. This would be half court man to man pickup where the other team are advancing the ball down the court and all the defenders get back and wait for them at the half court area there. Um, and uh, also it can be in a quarter court situation. So um, uh, man to man defense doesn't have to be full court, doesn't have to be half court, it can be quarter court. Uh, these are all uh, things that the coach can decide. Uh, but the main thing to remember is that each player is responsible for guarding one player from the other team. Here we're going to see some of the uh, basic drills that are used to teach man-to-man -man defense. So this one is called the shell drill. Here you can see uh, I'm out uh, talking to the kids here at Temple Stowe College about the position they need to be in uh, off the ball. So the player in this bottom right-hand corner has the ball. Um, you can see I'm talking to the girl there about uh, being in a position where she can see the player she's guarding and the ball. Uh, the further you are away from the ball, the bigger your triangle would be. So you can see this player who's only one pass away from the ball is fairly close. And on passes, obviously all players on defense need to move once the ball is passed. 
the player who's guarding the ball into an on-ball defensive stance, the players off the ball into a uh, good defensive triangle. And hopefully you can see here that all the players off the ball are maintaining that position where they are closer to that imaginary line between the ball and the basket than the player they're guarding. Uh, in a position where they can see the ball and see the player they're guarding and being closer to the ball than the player they're guarding. So you can see again there is a general rule if the ball is below the foul line on one side of the court like it's about to go here and you're guarding players on the other side of the court you should get to about the middle of the court what we refer to as the split line the imaginary line that runs right down the middle of the court. So uh, you know, the yellow team now rotate out, the blue team go to defence now and again we're just going to check uh, everyone's stance off the ball and as we move the ball everybody is adjusting their position to either an on-ball defensive stance or an off-ball defensive triangle. Again the, the thing that I'm emphasising here is the need to just step back uh, from that imaginary line between the ball and the player that they're guarding so they can see both. Um, you can see the uh, right, was good work there. Now the green team come in. Again, we're just making it real easy on the defense here, just moving the ball around the key with uh, checking players' stance and floor position. Uh, the offense are just uh, stapled to the ground so they can't move anywhere, which obviously makes it easier on the defense. And we're just checking to make sure that everyone maintains good stance and floor position off the ball. Now obviously I've got 16 kids here in my group. Uh, you may not have this many kids so you can get through these things a little bit quicker. You don't necessarily need to do it four on four. You can do it two on two, three on three, whatever suits your needs. Uh, as long as you've got a player with the ball and players off the ball who are working on their triangle and, and floor position. thing that I'll be constantly correcting here is their, their stance, floor position. What I'm saying to that player there is it's a good idea to have one hand pointing towards the player they're guarding and one hand towards the ball and uh, that will help them uh, think about that, uh, that triangle positioning a little bit better. He mustn't agree with me because he didn't do it. So now we're going to um, have them move the ball around a little bit and now we're going to add uh, some live action. Uh, so uh, what I do is just have the players pass the ball around until I say drive and then the player who has the ball then is going to try and uh, penetrate the defence and as a coach we're, we're looking at different um, teaching points uh, for people trying to maintain the right position on defence. Again, I'm the uh, the um, offensive team is still restric restricted to their quarter of the court, but um, once uh, uh, I call go, then we're um, then we're playing live four on four within those restrictions of staying in their quarter. So you see, initially defense aren't trying to steal the ball. On the sooner or later, I'll call that go, and then that player who has the ball is going to. You know, I've called it out now, so this player should now be trying to drive. Okay, so you can see very poor defense there by that player underneath the basket there. He let his player get between him and the ball, which would be what I'm talking to about him now. The main purpose of starting in this defensive triangle position is you can anticipate uh, the player cutting towards the ball and move to stay between them and the ball. But what he did was what I'm demonstrating here is he allowed his player to get between him and the ball which obviously makes it very difficult for him to uh, uh, stop him getting it. So what I'm demonstrating here is the position that he should have maintained uh, as that player cut and became closer to him and closer to the ball. His triangle will get smaller and uh, he needs to maintain a position of being between him and the ball, which makes it much harder for his player to receive the ball. OK, 
Okay, so now I've got some action here. I think I came up and set a screen, which is not what I want them to do right now. I'm, I'm trying to keep it as simple as possible for the defense uh, by restricting the offensive players' uh, areas and things that they can do. Okay, so we're into live action here. So the problem with the defense right there is that the offensive player was able to dribble straight past him. So this is where we talk about stance and footwork. Um, uh, the player on the ball has got to maintain a position of being between his player and the ball. And you can see here I'm demonstrating how his man just blew straight past him where he had moved his feet and stayed between him and the basket. Then uh, the only option the offensive player would have had would be to try and shoot it over him rather than blow by him and uh, get an uncontested layup. I'm talking to a, the other defender here is that he can help in those situations so he needs to come across uh, reading that uh, the defender has been blown by and he's the second line of defense and he can come across and help on that dribble penetration and then other players off the ball have to be ready and prepared to help him as well. So again, we move the ball around until I call it go. I call it go here. That was a much better job by the defense there. You can see that guy didn't allow his player to get by him. And as a result, the offensive player ended up throwing the ball away. All right, so I've called out go. Now the other players off the ball have to maintain a triangle. She was way too far away from her player then, but uh, fortunately, that's a pretty crummy shot. Yeah, again, I'm talking to her about being able to see the ball and see the player that she's guarding, maintaining that defensive triangle. I'm talking about the three lines, the line between her and the ball, her and her man, and her man and the ball. So now when the ball is passed, you can adjust her position and quickly get into a good on-ball position uh, where she's close enough to touch the ball um, and not give up an uncontested shot. So again, we're talking about here, again, the issue for the defence there is that the player on the ball allowed his player to get past him and lay it up, which uh, again is probably the most important part of being a good defender is being able to stop your player getting to the basket. What I'm talking about here is if he had just stayed between him and the basket and contested his shot, that's a much harder scenario than if a player can turn the corner, get around his player and have a wide open layup. Now we're going to add a little bit more movement to the offense here, just make it a bit more challenging for the defense. So what we're doing is slightly uh, increasing the game-like challenges for the defenders. Um, this time what we're having is a situation where on the guard to wing pass, the person who passed it is going to cut to the charge zone and then come out to the ball side corner. And then we're going to dribble the ball out to the top again and then repeat that action over the other side of the court. So what we're practicing here is the defender having to deal with their player crossing that line between the ball and the basket that you'll see right here. He crosses that line. Uh, she hasn't made the right adjustment on defense. Again, she needs to be off more in a defensive triangle. That guy, again, makes his defender go behind him. So the objective on those cuts is to stay ball side of the player they're guarding. So now I'm going to demonstrate here. So as he cuts, I hit that line between the ball and the basket, that imaginary line, that's where I need to make an adjustment. Whether I open to the ball or head snap, uh, that point is when I need to adjust. You can see here I'm in a good defensive triangle, good triangle. As he crosses that line, if I stay in that same position, well now I'm, uh, you know, it's obviously that he can be past the ball for a layup. So as he crosses that line between the ball and the basket, that's where I need to make an adjustment to my stance. So as he's coming and as he starts to cross that line, I stop. I keep vision on the ball. As he crosses that line now, here I'm demonstrating opening to the ball. 
And so I get back into my good defensive position of being uh, closer to that imaginary line than the player I'm guarding. Here I'm going to demonstrate a head snap where I just simply turn my head and now as he leads out, again I'm back into my defensive triangle position. So this scenario is probably the toughest challenge for an off-ball defender is when their player crosses the imaginary line between the ball and the basket and now the defender either has to head snap or open to the ball. What they don't want to have happen in these scenarios is allow the defender to cut between them and the ball. Uh, that's kind of like one of those number one sins in defense. If someone gets between you and the ball, it's very hard to stop them getting the ball. Uh, and any penetrating passes um, generally uh, lead to better scores. So again, uh, if he gets between me and the ball like we have here, it's a hard scenario for me to stop him. And obviously right now the ball is just on the wing, but the ball obviously moves around the court all the time. So that imaginary line between the ball and the basket is moving all the time. Uh, again here I demonstrate if he tries to cut between me and the ball, because I'm in a good defensive triangle, I can always stay between him and the ball. And eventually the offensive player will then cut behind you uh, instead of trying to cut between you and the ball. And when they cut behind you, uh, that's when you need to be prepared and well drilled in either opening to the ball or head snapping. And this is usually a difficult concept for players to pick up, so we're probably going to see some uh, interesting scenarios here as we look at these kids. Because again, these aren't uh, high level kids, these are probably more um, what I would call domestic players or uh, kids who are just, you know, being introduced to basketball. So again, good job there by that guy, made him go behind. Uh, Pretty crummy defense there by the guy on the ball. I'm too sure what he's thinking about. So again, just there, good. Stay between him and the ball, back into a defensive triangle. And again, right now I've got the offense going about half pace so the defense get used to the moving in the correct way. So now he jumps. Again, she's good triangle. Now she needs to open to, you know, she head snaps that time. Good. Good. Again, the offense right now are being very cooperative and cutting behind the defenders. Once we get into a game situation, the offense probably won't be as cooperative. He cuts, stays between him and the ball, opens, uh, head snaps that time. Good, that one opens to the ball, that was good. Jump to the ball, good, he opened to the ball. So I give them the choice of head snapping or opening to the ball. That guy head snapped. Um, so uh, it's one of those things you as the coach, you make the decision on what you want to do, whether you like head snapping or opening to the ball. It's one of those things I think coaches spend too much time arguing about. The main thing is you need to stay between your player and the ball and uh, be able to adjust your triangle when your player crosses that imaginary line. All right, so that guy didn't jump to the ball which makes it very easy then for the offensive player to cut between him and the ball. He can jump to the ball, she's cooperating, going behind him so he can stay ball side of her. We rotate another group in. So that's bad defense there. Let him get between him and the ball. Got to jump to the ball and force him to go behind. Arm bar him, that's it, good. Now he forces him behind, he opens the ball, back into a triangle. Pass here, jump to the ball, force him behind, that's it, good job by him. Pass, jump to the ball, open to the ball. Not bad. And again, obviously we're just going half pace right here at the moment, just getting the players used to jumping to the ball and maintaining their good defensive triangle.
good D there. And again, you can see the uh, defense are letting them pass the ball. And again, bad, bad defense that time. He let his man cut between him and the ball. Just what I'm going to talk to him about. As that ball's passed, that defender needs to jump to the ball. So that if he tries to come, he can meet him with an arm bar and stop him getting between him and the ball. It's going to force him to go behind him where he would head snap or open to the ball. So now I've called it live. And the breakdown of defense there is the girl there wasn't able to stop her man getting past her and driving to the basket. I think coaches talk way too much about help defense and not enough about this person on the ball being able to keep their player in front of them. And it all gets back a lot to footwork um, and uh, effort. Uh, but that is the, you know, the number one fundamental defense when you guard the ball is to keep it in front of you. All right, again, poor defense there. Let him get between him and the ball. All right, not bad there. Jump to the ball, force him behind. That's it. Now we're playing live here. Good penetration, not bad help. All right, not bad. Uh, the defensive point of good view then. Good help and recover. Uh, contested the shot. The shot missed, and the defense came up with the ball. That's a happy ending for the defense. And so I'm talking about blocking out here. The last phase of defense is always to block out. Take up the space between the player and the man. And uh, then you have the chance of keeping them to one shot only. Jump to the ball. Again, poor defense there. Let him get between him and the ball. Jump to the ball again, poor defense there. He's not in a defensive triangle off the ball. All right, again, poor defense there. Let him get between him and the ball, which I'm having to go at all of them about now. They all let their player get between them and the ball, so that was a pretty poor effort by that green group. Again, it all gets back to a preparedness to move your feet Use your arm bar to keep the defender or the offensive player away from your feet and staying ball side of the person you're guarding. Again, you let him get between him and the ball again. This is not good. This guy won't let it happen. All right, that was good. He needs to jump to the ball. Good defense by him as well. All right, now we're playing live, I think. So in this drill, I'm just allowing them to pass the ball around dummy for four or five passes, and then I'll call out drive or go, and then it's live action. That's when you'll start to see the uh, offensive team start to attack the basket. Again, poor defense there. Let his man get between him and the ball. Good defense that time. Jump to the ball. All right, it helps when the offense can't catch the ball, of course. And now I've called out live. Again, the offensive player just drove to the basket and the defense just kept backing up. At some point you've got to uh, protect that basket area. Keep backing up. Obviously they're just going to be able to shoot it over you. Again, here I'm just—I'm sure I'm just talking about maintaining that ball side position by being in a triangle, using the arm bar to help protect your feet to stop the offensive player being able to get around your feet, which gets them between you and the ball. Okay, now just creating some different movement for the offense. Now we're uh, we're now going to make a give and go cut. So pass. That player's going to cut to the basket, then out to the opposite side of the floor. If he's paying attention, yep. So now the defender is going from being in a very close triangle on that give and go cut to a big triangle when the ball goes, uh, when their player goes out to the corner. So you can see here the tendency all the offensive, all the defenders now have, is they chase their man out to the corner. Whereas if the ball um, is a long way from them, they should be in a nice big defensive triangle holding on that uh, on that split line as their player heads out away from the ball. So 
So first instinct is jump to the ball. When they're right now their player doesn't cross that line between the ball and the basket, so you can stay in that open stance. As that player goes away now, and the ball is still on the other side of the floor to what their off their defender is or their player is that they're guarding is now they can hold on that split line and not chase their player out to the corner. This uh, again is a key principle in being able to give good help to uh, the person who's guarding the ball. Because as we've seen already, uh, it's difficult to keep the player of the ball in front of you, so often you do need um, other teammates to help with that. Again, poor defense there, let his man get between him and the ball, I'm picking him up on there. He needs to jump to the ball, stay ball side, which is good. He did a good job there. He's obviously just jogging through to the corner with him. Stay ball side, you know, that's a yeah, poor job there. Jump to the ball, now we're live. No, I think I'm telling him off for not coming out to the corner. Okay, so I think we called live there and just stole the pass. She's in a good defensive triangle, so she's in a position where she can steal the ball. The thing you see that we're just constantly picking up here with um, with man to man defense is the players off the ball being able to maintain a defensive triangle. And you can see as we add more movement for the offensive players, it becomes more and more challenging for the defense. Which is why man to man is hard. It's uh, it's the most effective way of guarding good players, but it's it's difficult. Can he let his player get between him and the ball then? Again, poor defense there. The offensive player was able to cut between his player and the ball, get the ball, and uh, get a, a layup. Which I'm talking to this guy about here. So the ball was out the top there, and he's, he just stood there while his man cut straight, straight past him, which is what I'm talking about. But if he's thinking and in a good triangle, and he sees his man start to cut, he can adjust his position and stay between him and the ball. Now, if the ball is... Uh, pass to his man he has a good chance of stealing the pass if his player can get between him and the ball well he has no chance of stealing the pass again that guy there let his man get between him and the ball simply jumping towards the ball will make that much harder to happen Here I'm just demonstrating the use of an armbar in being able to hold your ground. It is illegal to put up a bent arm and make contact with an offensive player as long as that arm is bent and not extended. But referees are told to interpret players on the court like they're coke cans, they're cylinders. You're allowed to put your arm up on the wall of your cylinder and protect yourself, but you can't extend your arm outside that imaginary cylinder that you're in. Again, bad defense there, let his man get between him and the ball. And uh, this is what coaching is. Um, some kids are gonna get it, some aren't. You just have to be patient and work with those who are slow to pick it up. So jump to the ball, obviously the guy on the weak side of the court in this situation is still uh, way too close to his player. But I think this is good examples here of some of the things that you're going to deal with with your club team if you're working with uh, with kids who aren't, uh, you know, uh, playing Victorian Championships, um, even Victorian Championship level kids. 
could get better at this stuff. Um, I know that because NBL players could get better at this stuff. Uh, the challenge is if you're guarding the ball, keeping it in front of you. If you aren't guarding the ball, maintaining that defensive triangle while players are cutting and moving. Okay, so we're live here now. Again, that wasn't bad defense. You never, you know, as long as you can be in a position where you are contesting the shot, I think that's a reasonable expectation for defensive teams. Uh, obviously, if the offensive player blows by you and has an uncontested shot, well, I would say that's uh, a poor situation for the defense to find themselves in. Okay, not bad, jump to the ball, jump to the ball, pretty good, no, there you go, she cuts between his, her player and the man, bad, de bad defense, tough shot, alright, that's a good shot by the offense, but I would say that guy on the ball there didn't do a bad job, probably playing a bit too far off him, not close enough to put pressure on the shot and contest the shot. And what I'm demonstrating here is how you use that armbar to help uh, keep the offensive player from cutting between you and the ball. It's all to do with using their feet and their arms to maintain a position of being between the player and the ball and not letting the player who is cutting get between them and the ball or get ball side of them. The defender always wants to be ball side of the person they're guarding. So now we've still got this give and go cut, jump to the ball. All right, well that was, uh, again, poor on-ball defense. Guy can just blow by you and lay it up. It's not so good. Okay, so what I'm talking to these guys about now is where they should have been when the uh, when the drive occurred from uh, that wing there, that baseline area. So when that player drives to the baseline, who is the person that should be helping in that scenario? Now, uh, the person who is lowest on the opposite side of the court is usually the one who should be helping. This guy who's now wanking his way underneath the charge zone there should have been the one helping on that. Again, he lets him play a get between him and the ball. And when you're an undersized player, that's really going to work out well for you. But luckily, he missed the shot there. But again, I classify that as pretty poor defense by the guy in yellow. Let his player get between him and the ball there. Bad defense. Everybody else is jumping to the ball, maintaining pretty good position. Good help there. Good position off the ball good steal there shooting the gap might be in a good defensive triangle he gave himself a chance to steal that ball and came up with it you can see the weak side defenders again they're all playing too close to their player that allowed that guy there to cut Behind his defender and get open. Good steal there by Callum. Again, his defender's doing a pretty ordinary job of staying between him and the ball. And good backdoor cut there by the offensive player. Again, pretty poor defense as far as maintaining a defensive triangle. Again, poor defense again. With containing the person dribbling the ball, but pretty decent help off the ball. I lost his player. Okay, 
think Callum does a good job of staying between his play on the ball. So does this guy here. Good job staying between his play on the ball. Obviously, you want offensive players who can attack the defence and create uh, an opportunity of putting pressure on the basket. Can I classify that as a pretty poor effort by the yellow team? Again, poor defence off the ball. That guy let his player uh, get between him and the ball. Luckily, the offence were good enough to make a decent pass to that player. Again, off the ball, player allows his player to get between him and the ball, and so he can catch the ball fairly close to the basket, but uh, not good enough to make the uh, contested shot. I think I'm probably having a go at the defender there, for he's just playing way too far off his man. For these players to get better, they've got to be able to play the person who has the ball from touch distance away. And as you can see there, the reason he doesn't is because he's not capable of keeping him in front of him. But it doesn't hide the fact he's got to learn to use his feet, be able to play close enough to put pressure on the ball. As you can see, the guy guarding him, I'm sure, will keep him in front of him. Yeah, not bad defense on the ball. They're all keeping staying between their player on the ball. He wants to shoot this, but he had pretty good defense there again by Callum. Good help by Callum. What I'm talking about here for the weak side offensive players is uh, keeping good spacing, which makes it a bit harder on the defense. Showing him where he should be. If they're guarding players who are below the foul line on the other side of the floor, they should be at least in that middle of the court area there. They call it, refer to that as the split line, where they can see their player and see the ball. Now, if the ball is thrown cross court, they would have sufficient time to still move from a off ball helping position into a good on ball defensive stance and position. talking about here is that they're playing their player too tight it's very easy for their player to cut between them and the ball by getting further away from them they buy themselves some time to see when their player starts to cut that they can stay ball side of them and good close out there again poor footwork allowed his player to get past him remember the last point the last thing the defence need to do when the ball is shot is block out their player. Uh, no blocking out by the blue team then gave the yellow team another scoring opportunity. They took advantage of and scored on them. Here I'm talking about what happens when that player crosses that imaginary line between the ball and the basket. This is when they need to head snap or open to the ball. Um, if it's a backdoor situation where the player gets closer to the basket than them, that would also be an automatic time for them to open to the ball or head snap. Again, he got between his player and the ball. Pretty poor defense there off the ball. He's done it again between his player and the ball. That guy on defense is doing a really ordinary job. Which I'm sure is what I'm talking to him about. Should be in a closed stance, meeting with his armbar. Stay between his player and the ball. Again, yeah, there's another cutter between their player and the ball. Another one. There's another one. 
and uh, some people just don't get it. I'm sure I'm asking him in here why he continually allows his player to get between him and the ball. And I'm sure he's given me what he thinks is a perfectly legitimate excuse. But clearly, if he allows the offensive player to catch the ball that close to the basket, his only hope is if that guy just happens to miss. But nothing to do with whether he can uh, stop him from getting a decent shot. It's just a matter of whether he misses or not. Again, there's another person lost by their defender. And luckily, they missed. Still pretty poor defense. Again, another defender lost by a player not keeping vision on their man and vision on the ball. see an exchange of possession here the offensive team the new offensive team has to take the ball out to the three-point line before they can score again um, that's how we change possessions in a in a half court scrimmage situation the defensive team has to clear it, what we call clear it to the three-point line and then that can come in and uh, become the new offensive team Again, he's allowed his player between him and the ball. And again, he either fouls him or just hopes that he misses. Clearly the best defender here is Callum, the guy who's guarding the ball right now. He's uh, done a pretty good job of putting pressure on the ball, staying between his man and the basket all the time when he has the ball, uh, and being active off the ball, helping. He's clearly also the best offensive player. But then again, it was pretty poor defense by that guy about being able to maintain a good defensive triangle. Here he goes again. He's going to get scored on again. then you'd have to say that his effort at trying to get better at this is pretty poor. The defender. You know, it's, uh, you know, clearly there's some pretty poor efforts going on out there from the defensive players. Um, but, you know, I think you're going to cross the same coaches of domestic basketball are going to have the same issues. Uh, how you get those guys to try a little bit harder. I found push-ups to be the best method. You just stop them, put them out, make them watch for a little while. Uh, clearly, I was up the other end with the other group then, and uh, uh, some of them took that as an opportunity to uh, slacken off. So much about defense is just a willingness to uh, to compete, and uh, uh, again, you can see some kids there just weren't even interested in competing. Um, the ones who are interested in competing and trying hard, listening to what you're saying, trying to put into place the things that you're saying, they generally turn out to be the better players, um, and the ones that will continue to go on and improve. Those who uh, uh, aren't interested in competing, uh, in trying to win. Um, generally that's a characteristic that uh, sooner or later is going to stop them from uh, advancing the game or be one of those players who just lose interest in, lose interest in the game because everyone gets better than them. I 
so I'm just reviewing the the whole uh, the whole session here um, the things that stood out to me was just a number of times players allowed people to get between them and the ball you know when one of the basic principles we're talking about with defense is stay ball side of the play you're guarding uh, how they can use their arm bar and their feet to stop the player getting between them and the ball how uh, what I'm talking about here I would I would guess is when you're guarding someone on the opposite side of the floor and you don't need to play so close to them because that allows them space now to try and cut between you and the ball whereas if you get off in a good defensive triangle you have the advantage of space between you and your man which allows you time to react to their cuts uh, so uh, by being off where I am now um, if uh, the player in green was to cut I've got all that space between him and I to read where he's going and, and move my feet and stay closer to the ball than him and again the only way he can get the ball is if the ball was thrown through the air cross court and I would have time to uh, readjust my position and get into a good on ball position like I'm demonstrating here like even someone as slow as me uh, whilst that ball is going through the air I can uh, get to a better on ball defensive position I'm also in a great position here to help if the person with the ball was to drive to the basket at all. So again, players need to really understand the importance of keeping some space between them and the player they're guarding when the player they're guarding is a long way away from the ball. That space allows them time to anticipate their player's movement and cuts, allows a player to be in a position to help if there's dribble penetration away from the ball, um, and uh, they will still have sufficient time to get back to their player if their player has passed the ball. Uh, which is what I'm talking about here is, is basically the middle of the court is about where an off-ball defender wants to be if they're guarding somebody on the opposite side of the court to the ball if the ball is below the foul line. Remember, most scoring opportunities arise when that ball gets below the foul line on one wing or the other wing. So uh, the stance and position of off-ball defenders is obviously very important. Sorry about a little, uh, you know, uh, pause here. I'm uh, obviously talking to this group about um, more to do with uh, on-ball and off-ball defence. Shortly we'll move into some more drills we can use to help uh, develop team defensive principles. What I'm talking about here is just the importance of that lead foot when um, you're playing defense. As an offensive player here, if I can step over his lead foot, which is his left foot in this situation, well now I can really get uh, easily get between him and the ball. Whereas if he maintains a position of keeping his left foot away from me, uh, using his arm bar and leaning into me, then it's much harder for me to get um, a position between him and the ball. As so I'll demonstrate here, where he tries to come across, I just keep my left foot away from him, from him, and uh, I can maintain my good off-ball defensive position. The arm bar is what I use also to keep him away from my feet. Now we're going to talk about transition defense, uh, fast break, conversion from offense to defense quickly. The priorities are protect the basket, slow down the ball. Try and channel the ball to one side or the other, and as players arrive down the floor, matching up to players closest to the ball. 
First drill I'm going to use for this is a two-on-one drill. Uh, this is great for uh, junior players in particular. Uh, what the defender here is working on is getting back quickly and protecting the basket. And uh, in a two-on-one situation, if you can force the other team to take any other shot but a layup, you've done a pretty good job. In this drill, you'll notice the defender starts the drill at that yellow line, yellow netball line. The two offensive players start on the baseline, and uh, uh, on the go command, they uh, just advance the ball down the floor and try and score. This is also a great drill for developing your offensive skills, as a player who doesn't have the ball should be trying to get ahead of the ball, and a player who do ha does have the ball is making a decision whether to pass it ahead or to advance it themselves. Again, the number one priority for transition defense is protect the basket. Get back and protect the basket and try and force the other team into taking a lower percentage shot. We'll do some drills, some, look at some drills later on where we do this in a 5-on-5 uh, five five situation. But here, um, again, the emphasis is on the defender getting back and trying to force the offensive team into taking a lower percentage shot. If they're a smart, cagey player, they may uh, fake as if they're going to go and defend the player with the ball and try and get them to pass the ball earlier, which then uh, essentially will turn it into a one-on-one -on -one drill if uh, the, um, the defender only has to guard one player because the other player is, is too far behind the ball to have an impact. Um, what they can also do by faking as if they're going to go and guard the ball is um, get that player to pass it, and in that situation they might have a chance of stealing the pass. Okay, so they're the things that I'm uh, talking about with the group there. Offensively, I'm talking about here about what's a good shot in a two-on-one situation. Uh, uh, you'll see, uh, you'll see sometimes see the kids take uh, mid-range shots, um, whereas in a situation where you have two offensive players against one defender, uh, the shot you should be trying to get is a layup. Okay, which obviously is a much higher percentage shot. Okay, here we go again. Offensive player, see the defender's getting back, getting his back to the basket. If he's done a pretty good job there if he can force him to pass the ball two, two or three times. Okay, another good job on defense there where she's gotten back and forced him to shoot the ball over her hand. Same thing here, good job. Yeah, he's going to get back, hedged, hedged at the ball then, acted like he was going to go, then got back. I mean, a real game situation, there's another seven players making their way down the court. And so if you can force the offensive players into anything else than a layup or force them to shoot the ball from um, outside or pass the ball three or four times, then the rest of the defenders will arrive and um, the chances of the offense getting a real high percentage shot then um, are going to hinge on the quality of their half-court offense. Important thing for the offense, remember, is a player who doesn't have the ball to get ahead of the ball. Okay, now that puts pre more pressure on the defender to know whether to go and take the ball or take the player who's behind him. If that other offensive player is lagging behind, well, then it doesn't matter if they pass the ball because the defender will still have a chance to get over there and guard them.
Again, now here I'm talking more to the offensive players about uh, just arriving at the right time. You know, sometimes to play the ball can slow down a little bit to help let the other teammate catch up. But that person who doesn't have the ball has to be making every effort to sprint ahead and try and get ahead of the ball. The defender, get back and protect the basket. That charge zone there is a good guide as to where they should be getting to to try and uh, force a lower percentage shot. Anything outside there is not so bad. few more situations here. Again, the defender does a reasonable job there of getting back and protecting the basket. Offensive players way ahead of the ball there, which uh, uh, nearly ended up a real high percentage shot. That defender uh, should have not allowed her to get so far behind them. Again, good offensive execution there. One pass in a lap should be what the offense are trying to get. The defense can force more than one pass. They've done a reasonable job. And you'll see when the uh, offensive players are forced to take a lower percentage shot, that is a contested shot, um, often they miss and uh, that's what you can do from a defensive point of view often it's hard to stop teams getting shots you want to try and force them to take lower percentage shots and then make sure that your team um, are the ones who come up with that missed shot by blocking out as soon as the ball is shot Some more examples coming up here. Looks like my cameraman's gone to sleep. There he goes. He's back. That was a good read there by the offensive player. The defender hadn't got between the ball and the basket, so in that situation the offensive player should just keep going at the rim. Poor job by the defense there. She didn't get back and protect the basket so they could pass it over her head and end up with a pretty high percentage shot. Again, good job there by the offense. Not so good by the defense. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Now we're going to move into uh, five lines, and so we're going to go into a three-on-two situation here. So uh, as you may, might remember from our notes there at the start, in transition defense, our priority number one is get back and protect the basket. Number two priority is to try and slow the ball down, stop the, the advancement of the ball as much as possible. Uh, remember, it's a, a tactical disadvantage um, when you've got a three-on-two or, or when the offensive players outnumber the defensive players. And what you're trying to do is, is get it back to a situation where it's five-on-five. Five. And you do that by slowing down the ball, protecting the basket. If you can make the offensive team pass the ball two or three times without giving up a high percentage shot, then you've usually done a pretty good job with your uh, uh, fast-break defense or transition defense. Transition simply means moving from uh, defense to offense or offense to defense.
So really now I'm just talking to the kids about um, you know the spacing we want to have offensively with uh, a player of the ball in the middle of the court, players running down the outside lanes when they hit the foul line extended where those blue lines are on this court, cutting straight to the basket. Um, defenders, if they can meet you know one player protect the basket, the other player slow down the ball, try and force the offensive team into making extra additional passes until the rest of your teammates arrive and you can then match up man to man. So here we have the two defenders there, one's got the ball. There should be a communication process going on between them about who's got the ball, who's got the basket. <coughs> a reasonable job there again. If they can force a low percentage shot, they've done a reasonable job. Good job by Michaela there, anticipating the pass. What I'm doing here is throwing the ball to uh, a player and then calling out two names. And those two people are the two that go back on defense. Good job by Jess there to steal that pass. So the two defenders need to have a real quick conversation about who's going to guard the ball, who's got the basket. And then, I think he just passed it to the defender. It's not so smart, is it? Initially, not such a great job there by the offense. They're all standing a little bit too close together. Preferably in a fast break situation, the players want to get a third of the court each and have some good spacing. The more balanced their spacing, the, um, the harder it always is going to be for the defence. They're really hard, you know, well, I guess a lot of things that coaching are hard. The, the thing that um, players don't appreciate that you've got to keep reinforcing is the importance of talk between the defenders. Okay, a little simple uh, one player calling out, I got the ball, one player calling out, I got the basket can really help avoid uh, confusion and confusion will often lead to real high percentage shots for the other team. So uh, communication is key. As uh, the rest of the defensive players arrive, them calling out who they're guarding, uh, and you know, their priority should be to match up the players closest to the ball. Um, uh, the communication process, again, can take away the chances of them getting uh, a high percentage shot. Good stoppage of the ball there. Not bad protection of the basket. Again, they gave up, uh, didn't give up an easy shot there. You'll see when uh, the defensive players get in a good alignment of one player at the ball, one player at the basket, and then that ball is kicked to the wing. Uh, as that player who had the basket moves out to guard the ball, the other player drops back to uh, protect the ring, um, often referred to as, as tandem defense. This is what I'm probably going to be able to talk to right here to these guys about.
Some more scenarios here, and again, the, the, like no one stops the ball in this scenario here. They run all the way back and um, pick up the ball way too late. The earlier you can meet that ball, start to slow it down, perhaps guide it to one side of the court or the other, perhaps guide the ball handler onto their non-preferred non hand, uh, the more chance you have of protecting the basket and forcing the opposition into taking a lower percentage shot. You got a pretty good job by the defense there, getting into a tandem alignment. Pretty good alignment with those two defenders there. One guy with the ball, one guy with the basket. Not so good that group. You can see they nearly have a layup there, except the offensive skills weren't good enough to take advantage of it. I've said this before, but the uh, importance of fast break defense and just trying to get back and make the offensive team pass the ball around a couple of times is the uh, is the key to it all. If you can stop them from getting a high percentage shot until the rest of your team arrive, um, you've done a pretty good job. And you can see a lot of the times here, the more the offensive team is forced to pass the ball, the more likely they are to make a passing error. Um, okay. Now we're taking this five on five. Sorry, five on four. It should be five. Yeah, there's the fifth one arriving now. <laughs> So we line up the players on the foul line. They're the team that's about to be defense. The offensive players line up on the ba baseline. When I throw the ball to the offensive team, I'll call out someone's name. You can see that kid in the white t-shirt. has got to run and touch the baseline. And then he comes on as a new defender. It's supposed to put the uh, defensive team at a disadvantage. That time the offensive team was so bad that uh, they were able to match up pretty quickly without any problems. So now it's five on four into five on five. Again, more like a, you know, a, still a bit of a quick transition situation where the defense have to, again, prioritize. Someone should be trying to stop the ball here. Someone should be then matching up the players. So we've got four players on defense until that fifth player arrives. Same principles. Stop the ball, protect the basket, and then the two players who don't have those responsibilities are looking for players who are the most likely receivers of passes. And often that's players who are one, what we call one pass away from the ball. So not players on the opposite side of the court to the ball, players who are on the same side of the court that the ball is on. So again, you see the balls you meet met way too late here. That play, player could dribble all the way down the court without a defender coming to uh, stop them. And because it's a situation where it's a quick transition, it's not a matter of a player running to whoever it is that they're guarding. Uh, in a fast break defensive situation, it's a bit like a fast break offense. You don't run to um, offense spots you would run to in your half court set offense. Uh, you run and fill lanes and get there as quick as you can. The same applies with defense. You don't just run to your defender or the person you're guarding. Sorry, you've got to quickly re read the situation and anticipate what the priorities are. And uh, the priorities are protect the basket, match up to the ball. Guard players one pass away from the ball. So if your player happens to be 
uh, on the opposite side of the court to the ball, well then you probably need to rotate over and guard someone who is not being guarded closer to the ball. And then your teammates will need to uh, match up around you. <coughs> so no one again has met the ball until it's come all the way down to that yellow line. They're a bit slow getting it down, but the uh, other team did eventually end up matched up to them. There we go again. Is someone going to stop the ball? Yep, he's done a good job of stopping the ball. Now the ball's been kicked ahead. So that guy there done a good job of protecting the basket. And I'd say that was a pretty good job by the defense that time. Here we go again, we've got one player stopping the ball there. Again, I don't think they needed to cut that guy off and send him back to the middle. They could have just kept him on the sideline, which would have limited his passing opportunities. Who's got the ball, I would ask. No one is the answer. But, again, the offensive skills of the player were good enough to take advantage of probably the poor defensive situation there. So I imagine what I'm talking to them here about is the importance of understanding the difference between a fast break and a and a um, slow transition, like um, if there's a foul called or when a team scores two points um, and the ball is out of play for a moment or two, usually that allows enough time for a defensive team to get back and match up and find their players and guard their players. But when there's a quick transition from offense to defense or defense to offense, um, players have to quickly uh, remember the priorities and quickly find players to guard who are potential scorers. And again, that won't always be the player that they're necessarily matched up to. So if I'm guard number four, uh, that's my player, that's my matchup. I'm a guard, guard and the other guard. But in the fast break situation, number six, who happens to be a power forward, is left open uh, running down the court because his defender for whatever reason, is behind the play, well, then I would need to rotate over and take number six until uh, the other player arrives. And it might be that number six now goes and takes my player, uh, the number six's defender goes and takes my player, number four, so that he's not left open now, even though he's further away from the ball. Once the other team start passing the ball, then uh, there's every possibility that um, it will get to the player who's open. So... Uh, uh, the way you practice all these scenarios uh, that could occur in a game are using these drills that we're demonstrating here. A, a four on five and a five on five drill where uh, players have to read the situation, uh, communicate with each other and, um, and just make good decisions. And that's what you're doing here with this practice is continually put it, putting them in situations where they have to make decisions. No one's got the ball. No one's got the ball. That's, the ball has been advanced way too far down the floor before someone come to guard, guard at that time. All right, someone's got the ball here. Probably picked it up a little bit too late, though.
as we watch these uh, scenarios here, just uh, keep constantly asking who's got the ball, who's got the basket, have the players one pass away from the ball being matched up to appropriately, and then relate the defensive principles we've applied to so far about being in a triangle off the ball, uh, being able to contain the ball when you're guarding it, see all these things come into play now as we as we start to play five on five again. No one stopped the ball there, so as a result, playing up with a layup down the other end because the ball was able to be advanced down the floor way too quickly. Made them all go back to where they were when he had, he had got this far down the floor. Trying to identify to them who is the player that should have stopped the ball. Here I'm suggesting this is the guy who perhaps should have come to stop the ball. Because the other guy had the basket. Everybody else needs to come down and match up. This guy is trying to sneak in from behind. He should really be going to the other side of the floor. He's got to guard the ball again. Pushing us with a hustle that last player coming down the floor can come up with the ball. Even though they're late, often they'll be out of the vision of the offensive players so they can, uh, if they hustle, they can still make an impact. So what I've got going on now is I'm, I'm sending two players down to the baseline. So it uh, makes it again a bit tougher on the defenders. A bit more communication needed. Trying to bring them back again to point out what they probably could have done better in this drill. It's often beneficial just to walk through exactly what happened so you can point out who made the mistake. So right now, no one has got the ball. Probably that girl in the middle should be the one who's got the ball. The other two red defenders should be getting back and protecting the basket. I don't see anybody back protecting the basket just yet. When you have three defenders getting back, you can have one person take one side of the basket, another one take the other side of the basket, and then depending which side of the ball the court is thrown to, um, the basket can remain protected. As you can see, that guy there is standing beside his man. He probably should have been getting back and protecting the basket. As should the other defender have been getting back and protecting the basket. Those two blue players on the wings, they can't score from there. So there's no need to guard them in a three on two fast break situation. Make them have to come into scoring range uh, before you have to worry about guarding them. 
uh, or wait when the rest of your teammates arrive, then you uh, then you match up to uh, a player each. So here we go again, I'll call out two names. We'll send two defenders down to the baseline. See how we go with the defense. Again, we've got two people trying to stop the ball there. Uh, fortunately, the third defender was reading the play well and was able to pick off the pass. Again, Defense took a chance here in the back court, tried to steal the ball, didn't get it. That puts everybody behind them under all sorts of pressure defensively. Who's got the ball? Now someone else has to take the ball, protect the basket, match up the players as quickly as possible. All right, pretty good job there by the defense, except. There's a triangle breakdown. She let her player get between her and the ball. Probably should have been a foul caught on her if we had referees. All right, so we had a mix up, mix up for the offense. So it should be pretty easy for the defenders to get a player each. Pretty crummy shot. One person stopping the ball, bad job of slowing the ball down there. Again, you can see when the ball isn't stopped early how much easier it is for the offense to get five players close to the basket or advance the ball close to the basket. And the closer to the basket they get, the higher the percentage shot they're going to take. So in summary, uh, uh, you know, this video has been about introducing man-to-man -man defensive principles to coaches, talking about on-ball defense and on-ball defense. On-ball defense is about keeping the player you're guarding in front of you and not letting them get past you towards the basket. Off-ball defense is maintaining that defensive triangle, uh, understanding the importance of the relationship between the uh, you as a defender and that line between the ball and the basket. Um, how uh, when a player crosses that line, how an adjustment needs to be made to the player's stance. They do that with a head snap or a um, opening to the, of the ball. And the importance of just staying ball side of somebody and uh, how players can use their arm bar and their feet to stay between their player and the ball. And uh, in the later stages here, we've looked at some drills for you know building the defense up from uh, you know, protecting the basket initially, then into stopping the ball and protecting the basket. And as more players become involved, understanding the importance of different priorities, uh, the players closest to the ball, the last players arriving down the court heading opposite the ball so that you can quickly match up into a five on five situation. And again, in a quick changeover of positions, it's not always possible to go straight to the player you've been assigned to guard. You've got to guard priorities. And then when there's a dead ball situation, you go back to the player that you uh, orig originally signed to. Or if the player allows, you can, you know, players can switch back onto the player that they, they uh, were originally allocated to. But in quick transitions, 
uh, down the floor 